Hi, I'm Andrea Uzzardi and I work on the Swarm team. So today we're going to talk about um, Docker 112. So we're going to do a deep dive into the uh, architecture internals. So now we're going to talk about orchestration. So here we have a breakdown of, uh, of the nodes you saw earlier. So on the top side, we have a manager node uh, and, and you can see a breakdown of all the components. And down here, we have the worker nodes. So the way it works, um, let's assume that you want to deploy a service. So as a user, you're going to declare your desired state to the API and you're going to say that I want to run this service and it must be one instance. So you give that to the API and its, it's uh, role is to uh, accept the declaration. So it's going to make sure that it makes sense, it will perform some sanity checks and once they pass, it will store it into the data store. The next step is the orchestrator. So the orchestrator is here to reconcile the state between the uh, desired state, so what the user define, and the cluster state, which is the uh, actual, uh, actual state of the cluster. Um, the orchestrator in this case will notice that there's a new service uh, that needs to have one instance and you will compare that against uh, the current state and we'll, um, we'll actually see that even though the user wanted one instance, there are zero running. So we respond to that by creating one task to, to, uh, to fit that description. Um, now we have a, a task, it's not assigned to any particular machine and the next step is the scheduler. So, the scheduler is constantly watching for new tasks being created. And so it will take a task and then it will compare it against the machines that are currently available and we'll see which machines can actually run that specific container. So based on um, the resource uh, requirements and uh, constraints and some other things. Uh, once it figures out which machines can run the container, it will try to figure out like out of those which one is the best one. So it's a simple rank and sort based on the amount of containers that are already running on every machine, uh, the quality of the machines or any other custom defined uh, constraints. Uh, the outcome of that is to uh, create an assignment that ties uh, a particular task to a particular node. So uh, uh, since we had a service with one task, uh, it might you know, decide that the best place to run uh, this particular task is worker one. So it will write the assignment to the store and that's it. The final uh, step is the dispatcher. So the dispatcher is the component where all the workers uh, connect to and announce themselves. So every worker will connect, will say, uh, I have this many resources, I have this many containers running, and please give me work to do. Uh, and it will also maintain a heartbeat, making sure that the worker is still there. So the dispatcher watches for tasks that are assigned to one of, the, one of its workers. And when you get some new work to do, it will just send down uh, the task to, to the worker or remove it if we decided to you know, scale down, for instance. Um, and once the worker gets the task, it will execute it and then report back on the status. So it will say, uh, I'm preparing the task, I'm starting, uh, it's running, uh, maybe it crashed, uh, or maybe it was rejected because the image didn't exist. So um, that was to, in order to create a simple service. Now we can examine like a few other scenarios. Uh, for instance, the user decides to uh, scale the service from one to three instances. So uh, it's the same flow. The user talks to the API and performs uh, an update of the service and will change the, the number of replicas, uh, desired replicas, from one to three. So the API, again, will accept and store. The orchestrator will try to match it against uh, the current uh, cluster state. So it will see that even though the user wanted three instances, there is only one running. And so it will respond to that by creating two extra replicas. Uh, they will go to the scheduler. The scheduler will um, decide to put maybe one worker two and the other one worker three. And they go down to the dispatcher. And finally, each task is assigned to its correct node. 
Another example is uh, rolling updates. So um, again, it's the same flow. Um, for instance, let's say that the user wants to go from one version of its uh, web application to another one. So we'll do that by uh, declaring uh, um, a state change. So it will change the field image from one version to the other. The API stores, the orchestrator realizes that what the user wanted doesn't match uh, what's running on the cluster. And we'll respond to that by performing a rolling update. Uh, that's entirely um, um, configurable by the user. By default, we try and update uh, one task at a time. So the orchestrator will go on, uh, shut down one of the uh, old tasks and then bring up a new one with a new image. It will wait a little bit and then move on uh, to the next task and so on and so on until it reaches the end. The rest of the flow is the same. Like the scheduler will assign the new task to a new node, the dispatcher will send it, the worker will run the new code and that's it. Um, the final uh, interesting scenario is what happens when a machine goes down. So what happens when a worker crashes? So uh, let's take uh, this one, for instance. And let's assume that each one of those had like one task up and running. So when a worker goes down, uh, the first thing that will happen is that the dispatcher will notice that the worker is missing since it's not responding to heartbeats anymore. After a little while, the dispatcher will mark that worker as down. Eventually, the orchestrator will catch uh, that information and uh, it will do the only thing it always does. It tries to reconcile the state. So it knows that the user wanted three instances of that. And currently, there are only two since uh, this node is down. So again, it responds to that uh, by creating a new task and it's pretty much the same flow as if the user scaled up. So the next step is to go to the scatterer, dispatcher, and then the, the, the task will land on one of the remaining machines. Thank you for watching and please check out the links in the description for more information.